Hi, I'm Mike McAvoy, the EMS coordinator for Saratoga County, New York, and the fire EMS technical editor for Fire Engineering Magazine. I want to talk today about measuring blood pressure in patients. And first, I want to review a couple of key points to make your blood pressure measurement as accurate as possible. Size of the cuff is the first thing that's an important characteristic of making accurate measurements. If we took this cuff and placed it on our patient, we should end up with a size that covers two-thirds of the distance between the elbow and the shoulder. And on our patient here, from the elbow to the shoulder, the cuff is actually covering two-thirds of the distance. It's a proper size cuff. If the cuff was too small and covered less than that two-thirds distance, we would get a falsely high blood pressure. If the cuff was too large and covered more than two-thirds of the distance, we would get a falsely low blood pressure in the patient. The second thing that's important with measuring blood pressure is where the extremity is located in relationship to the heart. In all cases where you're trying to measure blood pressure accurately, you want the extremity to be at mid-heart level. So in our patients sitting upright, the arm should be right at the side of the patient. If we were to measure pressure with the arm up in the air, or if we were to measure pressure with the extremity much lower than the level of the heart, as though the patient were laying on his side, we would end up with inaccurate numbers. Arm up in the air gives you falsely low blood pressure. Below the level of the heart, if the patient was laying on his side, would give us a falsely high blood pressure. The other characteristic of the blood pressure cuff is to pay attention to where the bladder of the cuff is located. The inflatable part of the cuff is where the hoses connect and half of that cuff actually inflates. That part of the cuff you would like to be on the inside of the extremity against the artery where you're actually measuring pressure. In many of the commercial cuffs that we have, putting the bladder on the inside of the extremity causes the sphygmomanometer to be clipped inside the patient's arm and oftentimes it's necessary to detach it so that you can actually see the measurements that you're taking. Now, I want to talk a little bit about measuring blood pressures in high noise environments where you may not be able to actually hear or auscultate a blood pressure using a stethoscope. In many cases, we're able to place the stethoscope and to listen to the blood pressure as we're taking it. If we were in an environment such as an extrication or perhaps in the back of a moving ambulance, you may not actually be able to hear the blood pressure with a stethoscope. And in those situations, there are two ways that would help you to measure a pressure. The first you're probably familiar with, and that's by palpation. If we were to inflate the cuff while feeling the distal pulse, and in this case, we'll feel the patient's radial pulse. Once we feel the pulse, we'd inflate the cuff until the pulse disappears. And what I'll do with the patient here is pump the cuff up while I'm watching the sphygmomanometer, which is in my lap. When I feel the pulse disappear, I slowly deflate the cuff until I feel the pulse return. That happens at 120 millimeters of mercury. So I would report a pressure in this patient of 120 by palpation or 120 over P. Another method of measuring a pressure in cases where it may be difficult to even palpate a peripheral pulse would be to use a pulse oximeter. And what we do with a pulse oximeter is to attach the clip to the patient's finger or to a toe if you are measuring pressure in a leg. And actually get an oxygen saturation and a waveform on your unit of the patient. We'll set the oximeter so that it continuously measures the patient's oxygen saturation. And then once we have it operating so that it's continuously measuring, we'll inflate the blood pressure cuff until the waveform disappears from the oximeter. The waveform disappears, and now I'll slowly deflate the blood pressure cuff. The waveform reappears at 120 millimeters of mercury, and that would be the patient's systolic blood pressure. I'm Mike McAvoy. Thanks for watching.